This episode of Bourbon on Ice, presented by your friend Frosty and your bartender, Mike Whiskey, is brought to you by the Cape Media Center of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. The views and opinions expressed during this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of the Cape Media Center. Listener discretion is advised. Coming to you live from a blanket fort. Hey, Whiskey, why are we coming to them live from a blanket fort? Uh, it's kind of a long story that's maybe short enough to tell when we start. So we should just start the episode. Roll the music. Okay, then. Coming up on this episode of Bourbon on Ice, clear the table and set up the cards. You folks ever heard of a game by the name of Flux? If not, you're about to. We explain the rules. Or lack thereof. The regulations. And the rewards. Not that you'll be seeing any. It's the game that makes itself up as you go. This is Bourbon on Ice with your friend Frosty. And your bartender, Mike Whiskey. Stay tuned. Whiskey? Yeah. Why are we in a blanket fort? The reason we are in a blanket fort is because there is some activity going on at the Cape Cod Media Center where we normally record our shows. And so, lacking any... Practical? Practical is a very good word. Any practical sort of uh, office or... Sound booth. Sound booth. Any sort of that space. I have set up a blanket fort, fulfilling all of our childhood dreams. I'm sorry, I was distracted. There are dogs attacking me. Um, They're not attacking you. I'm under attack. They are good doggies. They're adorable, but I've never had to record a show with, with dog noses, like constantly creeping in and poking my elbow. Trying to lick your brain through your nostril. (laughs) <laughs> this is both adorable and weird, and I really hope that no one ever finds out we're doing this. Well, now they know. That kind of would defeat the purpose of the podcast, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. <laughs> but just to let you know that we are cooler than you, officially, we are broadcasting, podcasting, from a blanket fort. I should also point out there's a sword in here. Yes. Why is there a sword in here, Whiskey? <laughs> I collect swords. What's wrong with that? <laughs> We're sitting in a blanket fort eating cauliflower pizza and there's a sword in here. Yes, I collect swords. I am a great and noble knight of my proud fort. <laughs> we should give this thing a name like Fort Kickass or or Fort uh, Midcape or Fort... Uh, I don't know, come up with something clever and interesting. I, I can't do that on the fly. Then what on earth are we doing here? Isn't that kind of the, the purpose of the podcast, spontaneity and showing off how smart we are? Right? You would think that. We're total frauds. Yep. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about the nearest and dearest card game to someone's heart. Not mine, because I suffer terrible losses every single time I play it. I, I, I don't know who you're talking about, because I hate this game too. You win! Like, you... <laughs> I see what you did there. Exactly. I see what you... I, well I, played. Exactly. Well that, that played. Was, that was a big brain move. He sucks, ladies and gentlemen. He sucks. <laughs> like a hoover. Okay. His girlfriend's going to enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, I went there. We're that talking nice. about none other than Flux, the card game. It's a card game with rules that change over time, hence the name Flux. Everything is in Flux. What is Flux? Flux is a card game. Actually, it's dozens of different card games, each their own variation on the original. Flux is a game about change, and it changes as you play it. We call it the card game of ever-changing rules, and that's exactly what happens. You change the rules. How you win can also change from one turn to the next. Every game is different. It's... it's awful. I hate this game. (laughs) Flux is the flagship product of Looney Labs and was invented on July 24th, 1996. Oh, I thought this was recent. No. It's been tormenting people this long? Wow, that's kind of weird. Yeah. I will say, though, that uh, I have lots of game nights. Well, I did before the uh, leg injury and the eyes disappeared on me, but Flux tended to make an appearance, and the first time I played it, I was so miserably bored that I won by accident, and I just jumped up from the table and said, yes, it's over! And everyone's, like, glaring at me with this, weren't you having fun? No! No. (laughs) No, this game is not... A fun maker, at least in my in art. It's it's very it's very fun if you can get into it, which is why I've got a different version. Your uh, mileage may vary. Your mileage will definitely vary. Uh, I will say that there's lots and lots of versions. Uh, I, I hated Flux when I first played it. I had no idea how to follow it, and I do not like the original. 
but uh, Robert, he was on a couple of weeks ago. He gave me the Jumanji version. I fell in love with it. And actually, I, I love most things Jumanji, except spiders. Um, I own the uh, wooden Jumanji board game, too. Oh, do you? Yeah, people have told me not to play that, considering, you know, what's been happening in the world nowadays. Yeah, probably best not to. I, I, I enjoy injecting madness into the world. You chaos creature. Uh, people have told me, the Satanists, the atheists, and the Christians that I'm friends with have all told me I'm living in a spiral of chaos. At least they're all on the same page about it. Oh, fair enough. Uh, I will point out that uh, the ever-geeky Robert, he does own, of course, the Doctor Who version. He introduced me to it, but we actually found that one uh, ended really quickly, rounds of it. Hmm. Hey, Whiskey, do you remember... I'm just bringing this up to remind you not to talk about it. Do you remember a certain incident that happened the last time we played this game? I do remember that incident. We're not going to talk about it. Uh, I think we should. Just like Bruno, we're not going to talk about it. Uh, I think we should talk about we it. We don't though. talk about the incident. No, no, no. I think we should, though. Uh, I, I think it shows just the sort of shenanigans that uh, can get up to in this game absolutely not i i will let it die with us i will <laughs> kill everyone who was there that day and then jump off of a cliff the secret will die with us forever <laughs> i don't think you're gonna kill anyone at that table they are too near and dear to your heart my father also says i would need my leg and my eyes to be in working position to find and chase them down yes that is also true but first we have something else the return of whiskey asks hooray yay I think I'm gonna put like a sound effect of people clapping right here. Yeah. Making me saying that irrelevant. Yes. Also superfluous. And what's the word I'm looking for? Unnecessary. Unnecessary and um, what's the other word? Redundant. Stupid, uh, stupid is a good one too. Yeah. Okay, uh, we just wanna say to everyone and we had some answers. <laughs> Thank you all. Yes. Uh, what, did wanna... I, what did I ask again? <laughs> <laughs> you asked if we were moving to your town, what would you tell us to convince us to move? It's a great question. So, uh, and we got some great answers. <laughs> a lot of these came in through Facebook, uh, so we're gonna do the one that came in from Twitter first. There it is, uh, it's uh, at the DJ Ponychon. Come to Sandwich. We've got Sandwich Police, Sandwich Courts, Sandwich Town Halls, and Sandwich Sandwiches. Also really old people. <laughs> can't argue with any of no, that. You cannot argue with any of that. It, a 100% factual statements. <laughs> That's what it says <laughs> on the tin. Uh, then Aaron from Mount Clemens, Michigan. There's a surprising number of playrooms in my neighborhood. I don't know how to take that. <laughs> <laughs> He's from my crowd. <laughs> take it how you wish. I don't know if that's any better. <laughs> uh, uh, Robert from Woonsocket says, come to Woonsocket where Providence is only 20 minutes away. So is everything else in that state. <laughs> Indicating that nothing, is, <laughs> nothing but Providence is worth it. <laughs> Bob oh. out of Plain Ridge. There's a casino in town. That's the only reason you need. <laughs> My uncle would be there in a heartbeat. My uncle, <laughs> the mad lad, the casino sends him flowers. You're kidding me. I'm not kidding you. That's ridiculous. They know his name, they send him flowers. <laughs> And other little bonuses, because he spends so much money there. <laughs> I used to be loved by Mohegan and Foxwoods. They used to send me stuff all the time, but then the pandemic hit and I stopped going. Oh, I missed that place. Really good cigar bar there. Bo from Plymouth says, come to Plymouth. You get to publicly laugh at a rock. And this is why you laugh at the rock, because it's not even real rock. I just love how freaking precious everyone is over that, but when you get there, there's, you know, cigarette butts and Dunkin' Donuts cups and chips, like, tossed on the thing. It's ridiculous. And you'll never know where the real rock is, because they hit it so, so people don't steal it. <laughs> like the moon rocks. Exactly. There's someone called Boggy Fryer from South Yarmouth. I don't know this person at all. Wink, wink, wink. That's he real subtle there. I have no idea what you're talking about. Wink, wink. Uh, he said, spotty Wi-Fi and snooty homeowners, but hey, we've got a beach and lots of mini golf. You could say about the same thing for any town on Cape Cod. Nantucket. Yeah, Cape Nantucket too. They have mini golf? Yeah. I don't remember that. Here's one from Al Ostende in Belgium. Holy cow. 
Yeah, we have an international listener. Beach, great food, and very, very population. A town where extravagant people are very normal. That actually sounds like a good pitch, man. It really does. I mean, it's no spirit of Massachusetts is the spirit of America, but it does have a certain ring to it. Yeah. Yeah, then we got Dave out of San Diego. Great weather, great prices compared to San Francisco, Los Angeles, and New York. We have a nude beach, and we are very dog-friendly. I don't know, you might have sold me on the nude beach. <laughs> I, I tried that once. I couldn't do it. No? I, I sat there under a towel the entire time just feeling ridiculous. <laughs> There's the boyfriend next to me. Come on, drop the towel. Like, no, no. Not happening. Craig from Chicago says, all are welcome. That's so sweet. That is sweet, except you're from Chicago. MT from Toronto. Not everybody does it, but everybody should. That could fit in a lot of places. <laughs> why should I move there? <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Terry from Palm Springs says... Gay! It's the gayest town ever. If you're tired of cold weather, this place is hot, hot, hot! hot. <laughs> I don't know. I feel, I feel like Provincetown is the ancestral home of the gays. I, I kind of agree with that entirely. And I just want to say, thank you, Terry. We read that word for word. <laughs> yes, we did. It's great, though. We got another one out of San Diego. Yep. Dom. Per saying, perfect weather, beaches, great nightlife, driving distance to two other great cities. And Ace, he refused to give a city, but said, all boots are free. Ever heard of an old woman who lived in a shoe? <laughs> Does he live in the land of fairy tales? I, I, that would be a great place to live. I don't know. Are you kidding me? Witches and, and beanstalks and giants and people always getting eaten and there's an abundance of wolves and lots of pigs walking around. Also an abundance of geese who make golden eggs. I wonder how those taste. Dude, I wonder what they sell for. <laughs> I see where your priorities lie. Thank you, everybody. This was great. This was a very great correspondence. Ari, I invite every single one of you to ride to your chamber of commerce. They are clearly in need of your help. <laughs> okay, so once again, Flux. It is a game. How do you get a copy? Uh, they're out there. They're all over the place. That's the most I can tell you. There are many versions of it. Many. Pick any of them. No, no, wait, don't pick any of them because I've seen that there's some horrible ones. I'll get back to that in a second, but Whiskey is currently dealing out the cards. I think we both get five, right? And let me move this, and this blanket fort is oddly roomy. Yes, it is. Thank you so much. Good pillows. Also, there's a sword. <laughs> there's a sword. I... <laughs> Why can't you get over the sword? I, there, there are many more up in my bedroom. <laughs> I, I have a sword that's somewhere in my attic. It's there because mostly it's a you stay up there the issue. And the elder nerd has a cane sword. Isn't there like a, a like a flintlock around here? I swear I saw one. Oh, uh, maybe. <laughs> okay, uh, we are starting with Jumanji Flux, and uh, do we turn over one first and go from there? Um, no, I don't think so. All right, then I'm starting with a new rule, which is what's our new rule? So. The rule, the very first rules of Flux, the basic rules, are that you draw a card and then you play a card. So you draw one card from the deck and then you play one card from your hand. Very simple, very easy to understand. It's about to get a lot more complicated. How does one play Flux? How does Flux work? Well, and I am definitely not reading this word for word from a website as I'm doing this. One good way to learn is by watching videos online, but other than that, ah. <sighs> The game begins by placing a basic rules card in the center of the table, dealing three cards to each player, unless the uh, version specifies differently. The person who gets the game started by dealing the card goes first, and then you simply follow the basic rules. There are four types of cards, keepers, goals, new rules, and actions. How does one win? You draw the number of cards required. You play the number of cards required. You discard to comply with the uh, limit rules. And you do what it says on the cards. Confused? Uh, I'm not, but only because I've played once before. You place down a card and, uh, and do what it says on it. If it's a new rule, the entire rules of the game change. It can tell you how many cards you're supposed to play, pick up, or what has to be discarded each turn. Or some of them get weirdly creative or specific. Then there are goal cards. These ones are how you win the game. For instance, you must have this in your hand. You must have this on the field. You must have this many in your hand. It's usually a combination of keepers. At least in this version, it'll tell you you need one or two or three 
kinds of keepers to win the game. Then there are action cards. To play an action card, do whatever it says, then place it on the discard pile. And those can be outstandingly cruel. Oh, yes. Very outstandingly cruel. And finally, there are the keeper cards. Those are little ones that you put in front of yourself that basically help you win a game. I think it's kind of straightforward at this point. Okay. So let me uh, switch glasses here. I keep having to do that. Hey, wait. What's that over there? What's that? I have no idea. Goal mill. I'm going first. Oh, no. New rule. Once during your turn, discard as many of the goal cards as you choose and then draw that many cards. Ha! Do you want me to start winning again? Oh my gosh. Do you already have the means to beat me? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sakes. Just go. All right, so you pick up first, and I am going to... Make me make Frosty cry. Yes, I'll make Frosty cry. So, <clears throat> as a free action, I will discard my one of my goal cards... And that allows me to draw a goal, a card from the from the deck. Now Look, it's pink. I will use an action card, and it's a jackpot action, so I get to draw three cards: one, two, and three. Why do you have more cards than me? All of a sudden, we just started. I I told you. Did you want me to win? Oh, for hell's sakes! You're not gonna go easy on me ever. All right, new rule: when this card is played, choose a discarded action to replace it with. This becomes a new free action. Each player can use one during their turn. So, now, I can make the jackpot action a rule once per turn. Two and three. I've picked up three new cards. Why did I suggest this? Why? I don't know why. It's, why? It's, it's, la it's the incident all over again. We will not talk about the incident. <laughs> one, two. <laughs> Alrighty. Um... And I will end my... For those of you wondering, what we are playing is Jumanji Flux. <clears throat> that means that the cards are based on the movie for, uh, starring Robin Williams, the series that came out later with... Dwayne Johnson and Karen Gilliam. I don't and know. Kevin Hart and Jack Black and Nick Jonas. You. And I think Jamie Chung was in it. And oh, just a lot of really, really good actors. And it was really good, I will... Say that. So there are cards with giant spiders and man-eating plants and crazed hunters and rhinos and the jewel of Jumanji. It's weird. No one said this was not going to be weird. Oh, by the way, new goal. Oh, wait, I have to draw first. Yep. And new goal, so move that to the discard. That that was the discard pile. That is the discard pile? Yeah. Oh, wow. Put the goal somewhere else. So now you need uh, inside the game the game and the jewel of Jumanji. Hey, look over here. I'm looking up what versions of this game exist, and these are weird. Remember how I said there are no bad versions? Oh, gosh. Uh, there's Anatomy, Flux. That sounds interesting. Astronomy, that Batman. That sounds fun. Chemistry. Batman sounds fun. Chemistry sounds fun. Cthulhu. Can... That one sounds fun. You can see what kind of nerd I am. Chemistry and anatomy. <laughs> Doctor Who. That one sounds fun, too. Drinking. Yeah. That... How does that not sound fairy tale? Firefly, Flux Blanks. I have no idea what that is. Yeah. The Board Game, 5.0, Dice, SE, Holiday, Jumanji, Marvel, Math, Monster, Monty Python. I think we should stop immediately and go get that one. Yeah. All right, so I ha um, I did my free action jackpot to draw three more cards. I will put down a new rule to play all but one. And now what I will do... So now I will play the... Um, keeper card. So I've just played a new rule, the play all but one. So I have to play all but one. So now both of us have to play every card but one in our hands. So now I will play the keeper. Oh my the gosh. Back uh, the backpack. So I can ignore hand sizes. And let's see. I will now card three goals as a free action. And I may draw three more cards. One, two, three. Rosie's coming to visit. Rosie, help me. Bring me luck. <laughs> I don't know. Rosie is an adorable dog, by the way. Oh no. The other one's coming to visit too. He's after my pizza. No. Alrighty. Uh, new rule. Keeper limit of four. I will play my action card. Use what you take. And it allows me to put Take a random card from another player's hand. Dude, I'll this is still one. your second turn. Yes, I know. New rule. Hand limit of three. La, 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 la. Can I do it yet? No. Uh. <laughs> I will. Next, I will play the monkey keeper. I will play the lion keeper. I will play a new goal, the trusty sidekick, which means I need Dr. Bravestone and Mouse. I don't know if it's Doctor. I didn't watch the new one. Um, 
Dogs, both of you, I will pay you in bones to literally knock him over and, like, steal all of his cards. I will play the Monkey Slow the ex Expedition Action card. All players must discard one card from their hands. Oh, for crying if out monkeys loud. are in play, the character who has them must discard all cards in their hand. I, I have no monkeys. I didn't see that. I didn't think that one through. I have to discard all my hand now. <laughs> Wait, did you do something that was bad? I did do something stupid. Oh, thank heavens. For a minute there, I was thinking that I was going to lose again horribly. And now, I mean, I'm still going to. But... Now I have nothing left in my hand. <sighs> Frosty, it is your turn. <laughs> Continuing. There's also Nature Flux, Pirate Flux, a Rick and Morty, SpongeBob SquarePants, Star, Star Trek, Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, Star Trek Next Generation, and Zombie. Rock on. There are also... A list of in the vault, no longer in production. And while we're here, I'm gonna play. Uh, let's see, I got a. How many do I have to draw now? Just one. Because of all of your shenanigans. Just one. Okay. Well, I am uh, playing rule reset, so all of this crap disappears. <laughs> Get rid of all of it. Every last piece of it. <laughs> uh, gone. Gone. I say. <laughs> These are ones that are no longer in production, but exist. You can probably find them just floating around on the internet. Adventure Time. Okay. Cool. Cartoon Network. EcoFlux, Family Flux, Flux 1.0, 2.0, 3.1, 4.0, Martian, Oz, Regular Show, and Stoner. Wow. I, I really want to know about the Stoner version. Please, someone tell me that. This this actually reminds me a lot of Munchkin. Do you know Munchkin? I have no idea. Who is Munchkin? Munchkin is a game sort of like this. Kick the door down, beat a monster, stab your friend in the back. That's the tagline of the game. So it's right up your alley, Frosty. Are we absolutely <laughs> certain this is a game? Yes, I'm absolutely certain it is a game. It's a game. It's a card game. Almost like a fantasy card game. So it has lots... And it has lots of spin-offs. So there's Star Wars Munchkin. There's regular Munchkin. There's Super Munchkin. There's all kinds. Okay, am I winning? Um... Did you do anything? I have not done anything. And actually, because you did your rules re reset, you can only draw one and play one, so... So I guess my turn is finally over? Yes. Your turn, you laid down like 50 cards. Yeah. I laid down one thing and, and that's it? Yep. Why? Oh, I draw a card. All right, action card. Draw three, play two. One, two, three. Must you complicate everything? I have to play two of these. So, <laughs> how quickly do we, do we want this game to end? For the love of God, let me die. <laughs> well, I'm not going to let you die. So I'm going to play Danger, Extreme Cake Allergy. So if, uh, cake... Because of course, why not? Because, so now what this does is if anyone has the Cake Keeper in play, they die and lose the game. They can come back later because Flux lets you do that for some reason. And the next card I will play is Lion's Attack. If someone has lions in play, that player is eliminated. Did you just eliminate yourself? I did just eliminate myself. Did I just win because you killed yourself? Yes. You oh did. my gosh, I finally won a game. I know, and so did I. And and you were here for it. <laughs> yes, and I won too. This was wonderful. <laughs> I won because we're not playing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> to continue, there's also Christian, 13th Doctor, Doctor Who version, uh, Firefly 10th Anniversary, sorry, oh, Flux 10th Anniversary oh. and Firefly edition. Um, there's the Party Favors version, the Creeper Pack, the Jewish Pack, the Mammoth oh, Fun Pack, <laughs> Math Flux, the Black Math? Knight Expansion for Monty Python. Nice. The, the regular show Future Promo Pack. And the Zombie Flux Flamethrower Expansion Pack. Who's putting this much effort into all of this craziness? Well, they're making money off of it, so for every seat, there is an ass. That's a good way to put it, honestly. But seriously, what kind of lunatics would just arbitrarily sit down and say, let's do this. Let's dedicate our time to this. So you're going to deal those or what? The Cape Media Center, located in Dennisport, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, is a non-profit community media center and the public access TV station for the towns of Barnstable, Yarmouth, Dennis, Harwich, and Chatham. Our mission is to build community through media, enhance democratic communication, and facilitate free expression by providing these towns with a state-of-the-art media resource center. Members can become trained in our video and audio equipment and produce their own media content. Membership includes training classes, access to our field equipment, studios and facility, as well as airtime. Podcasters and music producers can share their content on our website. For more information, visit capemedia.org. All right, so you're putting me through another torturous round of game. You, you only tortured yourself because you intentionally lost just to make me feel better. That makes you a good friend, but a lousy player. <laughs> Anyways. New rule. Draw five. Rock on. Why did I do that? 
That's but just going to make You only get to draw one for this turn because you're supposed to draw before you start your turn. But that's just going to make everything longer. I know. Why did I do this? I don't know. Okay, you do continue. get the one card. Okay. Well, that's in my hand. But now I get to draw five. New rule. Play three. Instead of playing just one card, we get to play three. Does that replace the previous rule so now I have to play eight cards all at once? No. Oh, thank heavens. So, no, no, no. We, we draw five and we play three. Action. Jump right in. All players get to play the keepers in their hand. Uh, do I have to do it now? Yes, you do it now. We Look, both do it now. There's a giant bug, and there's the jungle. Hooray! What do you got? I got um, just the albino rhinos. That's a really fun thing to say. Albino rhino, albino rhino, albino rhino, albino rhino. Yep. So I've also, my feet are falling asleep. One card, I need to play two more. So I'm going to play a new goal, the cartographer. We need Oberon and the map. And for my last card, I'm going to play a new goal, kickers of butt. Uh, we need Bravestone and Ruby Roundhouse. 100% certain everyone listening thinks we've lost our mind. I know, right? But these are real cards. Yeah. Can so I Now go it's now? your turn, and you get to draw five, and Whoa. then you'll play three. Two, three, three four, four, five. God, I have so many cards here I could make a fan. And then you play three of them. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, so we're looking for a tough-looking redhead and a tough-looking bald guy. I think that's Karen Gillan in The Rock. Yes, it is. Let me turn myself around even more. You know, I have to point out that she somehow made it into the Marvel Universe, and he has yet to get there. I think that's okay, though. He'd be awesome! I mean, we, he could make a really good villain or something. You know, he probably could. All right, so I'm going to put down a lion. Look, there's a lion. Rawr. And I'm going to change the goal, because why not? Now we need, I don't know. Jungle, someone... wildlife, and any two animals. Well, there's uh, one that's directly behind me. Does that count? No, but you have two animals. Good boy, good boy. And the jungle. Wait, did I win? You won. How did that happen? Very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> According to this, there's actual cards that were just created. Promo flux cards, and I don't know what they do, but these are just ridiculous to say, so I'm going to say some of them. The all-you-need-is-love card. Oh, man. The... 100,000-year-old game from Mars, the Android Doctor, Andy Looney, Angry Mob of Villagers, the Brain, Cake, just just says Cake, Coffee Break, Con Crud, the Double Agenda, Esri Dax, Final Card Random, Flamethrower, Foam Brain, Fruitcake, I'm assuming that has to go with the holidays? Maybe. Horrifying Sculpture. That sounds weird. Haster the Unspeakable. We don't speak about it. Much like the incident. I still think we need to tell them about the incident. Never! I will never, ever mention that horrible thing. But I will mention there's a card called Marlene Bruce, and one called Larry. <laughs> a just card... Larry. Just Larry. I have no context for this, and neither do you. Just Larry. <laughs> Nuclear war. Reverse order. Recycling. The Robodoc. Skullduggery. That's not, that's a cool word. I, I like love that. that word. I love that word, yeah. Start the clock. Swap plays for draws. Talk like a Martian. Um, how does one talk like a Martian? I take that back. I, it can actually be done. The television is watching you. I mean, it. it is. Ugly sweater. No, no, that's a card. I'm not making fun of you. Well, gee, thanks. No. <laughs> Zap a card. And zombies eat brains. I'm genuinely questioning the fact that someone sat around and came up with these, which which leads me into, I'm, I'm looking at this other one. Uh, this is all, and I want to make sure to thank geekyhobbies.com. They have done some comprehensive reviews here, especially Eric Mortensen. Thank you so much for all of your work. Some of these are absolutely weird, but someone bought the sets, or they were actually sent them, according to this. Uh, he thanks Looney Labs for the review copy of Anatomy Flux. So he could actually go through this. The cards are kind of weird. Um, name that organ. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, one of the goals, the appetite, you need the brain and the stomach. Uh, blood vessels contain appropriately five liters of blood in arteries, veins, and capillaries. Well, Oh, uh, my goodness. It's educational as you play. <laughs> why? Why would you do that to someone? Why would you inflict? Oh, and they have creeper cards. Uh, oh, my leg fell asleep. Action ah. cards are played for the action printed on the card. Yes, we know. Thing that happens due to an action card. Okay. But what is a creeper? Uh, this one's called mutation. You cannot win if you have this. Oh. Attach this immediately to any keeper. So uh, what? It's disease? Oh, there is a card called disease. <laughs> <laughs> 
there's the lungs. There's the blood vessels. Ventricles. That's called the respiratory system. That's a goal. <clears throat> the review here for Anatomy Flux, it shares a lot with the rest of the series. And if you ever played another game of Flux, you'll know what to expect out of the game. Is it gross, though? And I don't think it's gross because, I mean, you need the gore and it's just showing the pictures. There's Car- a z- kind of cartoony. There's a zombie flux. I'm certain that one's gross. Probably. Name that organ. Whenever a player is going to play a keeper card, they have to first read out the description of the organ to the player on their left. As opposed to the person on the right, like, what does he do? Like, plug his plug his ears and sing to himself? La 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 la. Let's pick another one. Uh, oh, there's one. There's one. And this is again by Eric Mortensen from uh, geekyhobbies.com. We'd like to thank you, Eric Mortensen. Yeah. Marvel Flux. Of course. Why wouldn't there be? There's one of everything else. <laughs> There's a freaking Adventure Time one. Uh, what, is that annoying lemon guy in there? Lemon grab? Unacceptable! If anyone knows what I'm talking about, I'm very sorry. You are very sorry because you didn't scream it out at the top of your lungs and break our mic. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, so predictably, these are, you know, Marvel-based. The Spider-Sense card... The Groot card. While you have this card in play, the player can only say, I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. (laughs) I love that joke. Ah, there's a dog standing on me. Help, help. Sniff, 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 sniff. Yep, there's a dog standing on me. Yep. Uh, Then we've got the science bros, which would be Iron Man and the Hulk. Thanos snaps his fingers. (laughs) Just as you (laughs) snapped. I, I, I just saw this card. Uh, Iron Man, Black Widow, the Avengers themselves. Yeah, it's a whole mishmash. It's ridiculous looking. Someone actually takes a lot of time to go through all this. One of the other things is I decided to do it just a little bit of extra research. The Longest Game of Flux. There is no record that I found definitively, but... Anecdotally? Minimal, <laughs> a minimum of two hours. Holy cow. To 21 hours. Holy, 21 hours? Why? Who, who has the mental fortitude to sit through that torturous game for 21 hours? They must have sent out for pizza and also waffles and then later steak. Yeah. Someone said, let's play a game of Flux. And then they purposefully decided to screw with each other long enough so that it took 21 hours. Okay. You can't complain about the incident now after I re- hearing about that. I refuse to not complain about the incident. <laughs> this is me we're talking about. I, I will point out one ridiculous fact, and that's that beyond the shadow of a doubt, <clears throat> whiskey is really good at this game. <laughs> I only won today because he clearly wasn't trying or was trying to make me feel better. One of the two games I lost on purpose, and the other two you sort of won by accident. So you're saying that there was absolutely no skill involved in this? There was absolutely no skill involved, except on my part of killing myself. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Okay, I want to take a break from the game. As long as we're down here, I have got to say, this is a very nice blanket for it, but I can also see under this table. What am I looking at here? You are looking at a collection of games, tabletop games, really. Uh, In the back there we have Othello, there's Kerplunk... There's Settlers of Catan. We're not playing that one because that ends friendships. So does this one. (laughs) Where there's Mastermind, there's Stratego, there's Risk, which also ends friendships. There's a Mystery House. Do you play Uno? That also ends friendships. Yes, it does. Do you play Mario Kart? Because that really messes with friendships. Yeah. Um, We got some Cribbage. I've got a Rubik's Cube. That's not a game. That's a mental handicap waiting to happen. (laughs) I've got Simon Says. Be gone. Back to hell. I got creps. Oh, um, I can stop if you need to go to the bathroom. No. Ah. Um, the dice. <laughs> I, I know. I was making a really terrible joke. I know. Uh, we got Battleship. Laser Maze over there is actually just sort of a one-person game. You set it up. It's a logic puzzle. Uh, I, I realized you were looking at it earlier. Like, what is this? I'm trying to count, and I've lost track here because now there's ones in the back. So I'm... I think there's at least 20 games here. Yep, uh, there's a chessboard and Chinese checkers there. You do have a chessboard. Yep, there's plenty, there's lots of chessboards here. Like I said, there's Othello in the back. Behind the Othello is uh, Jenga, and then underneath the laser maze is Mad, Mad Gab. Gab. Yep. Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you don't play that one with, with nice people. And who... 
Who has been to a um, escape room? I know which one you're looking at. Yep. You're not going to believe it. That was in my Christmas stocking. Was it in your Christmas stocking? So now I have it too. Oh, that's awesome. Now that I can see again, I need to break that thing out. Yes. Anyways, what we are looking at is Mystery House. It is an adventure mm. in a box. It is an escape room. If you go ever, if you have an escape room near you, find it. And they have these little single player take home adventures to do escape rooms at home. So I grabbed one. And I still need to play it, but uh, perhaps... With us. I've seen you set it up. Yeah. Perhaps with a... Perhaps on in the future segment, we can do that. Oh, we should get the guys together and try this thing out. Yes, we should. Also, I just want to say really quickly, uh, a shout out to the people over at Upside Down Games. They have let me in on a not-so-secret secret. There's a new game coming this year to Cape Cod. A new escape room. Ooh, rock on. I hear it involves escaping from... A room. You're not allowed to tell, are you? I have absolutely no details on this whatsoever. Oh, you just know that a new escape room is coming. They told me. I've been trying to peddle my own, as as I've told before. I've been trying to sell my own, but apparently I'm just not good at it. Oh. oh well, well. No, I mean, I'm great at making them, just not selling them. Oh, I got you. But when I sell them, all of you better look out, because there's no actual threat I can deliver. Nope. Uh-huh. All right. So... We'll set him up one last game. Ready? No. Ready? Yes. Okay. And I'll tell everyone about the incident. Oh, oh, this will be great from Frosty's perspective. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and the incident is... Hey, good throw, Frosty, good throw. Now, go long. You really sent it, Whiskey. Now it's in Miss Adams' yard. Yeah, that's a shame. Well, let's go get a new ball. New ball? Why don't you just climb the fence and grab it? I ain't jumping that fence. The fish is animals in that yard. The yard's empty. There's cougars. There are no cougars in that yard. You haven't met Miss Adams. Quit being a baby and just go get it. Well, why has it got to be me? Because you threw the ball. All right, fine. Jeez, I'll go get the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Just give him back before dinner, Miss Adams. No! <laughs> A moment that shocked and horrified all of us, and we swore we would never talk about it again. And now you know what the incident is. <laughs> I just want to point out the big brain strategy that was going on there. There was no... Str- that was dumb... Li- do, you, do you realize that... Uh, this is why we don't talk about it. Yep. This is why, after you were done, we had talks like this. We're not doing this again. And one of the guys stole the bo- stole the game so that it wasn't there anymore. Uh, years ago, my mother, she's extremely competitive. She doesn't like to say that, but she is. She likes to play this whole go along, get along thing. But, oh, she's one of the meanest people on earth when it comes to games. My Mother and grandfather are like that, too. My mother, when she used to play Monopoly with us, right? And she would say, hey, do you want to stay up past your bedtime? That was a sign for, this is going to get ugly. No, that was a sign for, sell me your property to stay up late, only to play the game longer, so that she could win. (laughs) My grandfather was even worse. Hey, kid, what's that new game you want? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Uh, There was a, I don't know if it's little known, but... It's never been ported to another system. Uh, On N64, Tetrisphere. Loved it. Loved the music, loved the gameplay, loved the challenge. But my mother and I used to, you know, compete. Like, look how far I've gotten. Well, look how far I've gotten. And then one day, she was getting so bad that I literally stole the game cartridge and hit it. So she couldn't play it when I wasn't there. (laughs) We got into a huge fight when I came home. She, like, grounded me for so long. (laughs) <laughs> I did what I had to to keep her from getting ahead. <laughs> it, and it was quite literally one of those moments where the most responsible person in the room steps in and says, I'm going to King Solomon this. <laughs> My father took the game and said, that's it. You two are no longer playing this game. You, mother of child, you, child, will no longer play this game. Wrong. That's so unfair. <laughs> but it shortened the war by several years. <laughs> And saved countless lives. No, but I, I, I at least need to tell our viewers, our listeners. Let's hear it. Um, the strategy, the big brain move behind the incident. Because 
not only did I win, I I won not just the the that game. I won the game before too. But not only did I win and become the undisputed champion for all time, I ins- by ensuring that we would never play again. I won because we never get to play have to play again. <laughs> Not with you. (laughs) And I am forever (laughs) the undisputed champion. (laughs) It really was the perfect crime. It was the perfect crime. Next time on Bourbon on Ice, we throw it back to early 2020. It's a time of strife, disease, but we do have one question. What have you been watching this pandemic, people? We want to know. Tune in next week to Bourbon on Ice and have have a cold cold one on us. I I still think you cheated. I did not. I'm certain of it. I did no cheating, no shenanigans. Actually, it was all shenanigans, but I did not cheat. Dogs, get him. (laughs) This podcast was recorded at and produced by Cape Media Center on Cape Cod, Massachusetts by podcasting duo Mike Whiskey and your friend Frosty. All music and sound credits go to soundstripe.com. Special thanks to Jamie Horton, Emily Tullock, Gabrielle Rawson. For more information on Bourbon on Ice, visit our social media page at twitter.com backslash whiskeyfrosty. For more information on Cape Media Center, visit capemedia.org. For more listening options and a variety of podcasting entertainment, visit our hosts at buzzsprout.com and capemediacenter.org.